Okay, you guys, so I was feeling kind of humdrum because I'm on day three in my Florida garden with overcla overclassed, <laughs> overcast, cloudy, hazy skies. I just need my Florida sunshine, but I got some more sunshine from another source. There's a polydama swallowtail down there. I just decided, you know what? I'm just gonna go walk out in my garden in the cloudy, misty rain weather. And I saw it flying around and then I realized it was hovering all around the pipe vine. And I thought, oh my gosh, it's a female. I'm getting eggs. And I ran down there and sure enough, there's eggs so she's been flying all around that area which i do have a lot of pipe vine i haven't even looked at those plants but i immediately came to my trellis and i can see them from far away you guys look the wind is not cooperating with me but I hope you can see, look at them. And they're all coming in, y'all. They are all coming in. That's why I brought my trimmers. If I find more, I'm not bringing all those in. But these guys, these are mine. I, y'all, I cannot tell you how happy this makes me. If you're new to my channel, these are eggs that a polydoma swallowtail butterfly just laid on its host plant. The Wooly Dutchman's Pipe Vine. This is my absolute number one favorite. Oh, there she is. Favorite butterfly to raise. I love these caterpillars so much. And my day has been made. Look at her. Look at her. Look at her. She's over there. Thinking about laying more eggs. Mm-hmm. And those two containers right there is more pipe vine. Yes, ma'am. Okay, let me go get these before some lizard comes along and eats them. While I was trimming this cutting, she literally came over and was hovering around the pipe vine, like right in front of me. And of course, I wasn't filming at that time, but it was a fabulous moment. And in they go. Look at those adorable little eggs. A few days from now, these little babies will be climbing all over. And what is so fun about raising them is like they all like stay together like little buddies. It's just the cutest thing. While I'm in the lepidarium, I think I'm going to go grab some more wild lime cuttings and I'm going to split up these cuttings over two containers so they're not all so close by and together. These guys don't hang out together and you don't want your caterpillars ever to feel stressed like if they're aware there's a lot of caterpillars around they might feel like they need to be hoarding or <laughs> whatever although these guys are so chill that's why i love them these are my second favorite to raise giant swallowtails on wild lime so i now have my first and second favorites in the lepidarium this is a good day y'all it's a good day. Look, now she's up here because I have some pipe vine growing up here in containers and she knows it. Oh my gosh, she's going to lay eggs all over my garden and I I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Look, there's a red trash can. International symbol of tap the like button. I'm gonna get cuttings from my big wild lime tree. And actually this one has this branch that comes over and is hanging down. And that's where I'm gonna take the cuttings from because I can't really walk through here 
because it gets me. Y'all know, if you know the wild lime, you know what I mean when I say it gets me. And that's not a good thing <laughs> because I'm going to put my walkway in there and I want to be able to walk all the way through and not be gotten <laughs> or caught by the wild lime. So this is where I'm going to gather my cuttings from. Okay, I've got two really nice cuttings. So that's going to be great. They're going to love it. Look how pretty my hammock snake root is. I don't think I showed this to you yet. It's in full bloom now. And I absolutely love it. It's such a pretty little puff of white in here. And even when it's not blooming, I like the low, um, it's kind of delicate, but yet shrubby filled in shaping of the leaves. So, and honestly, like that one back there, is so much darker and richer that's the one that's been in my garden longer these ones were all recently planted from pots i think that's why their leaves are lighter but look how pretty those dark rich greens greens leaves <laughs> look how pretty and rich and green those leaves are so i i love having this in my wildflower garden my Florida native wildflower garden, which is slowly getting turned over to just the wildflowers that I absolutely love now that I've gotten to know so many of them. Oh, look, there she is. <laughs> All right, I've got one cutting in and Here's another little one. I want to let you know, like when I do my cuttings, I take off the lower leaves and if there's any thorns, I trim those off too and put them down in the floral tube. So I'm going to set up two. I think I'm going to get a third cutting and do three floral tubes and then uh, evenly split the caterpillars among them. All right, there's two ready. Let me go grab another cutting. Y'all, being a caretaker of garden inhabitants is the best. I can't recommend it enough. Even if you don't take them in and raise them like I do, just cutting out and caring for nature in your backyard and having a garden that sustains a population of living things besides plants, like maybe you do hummingbirds or birds or pollinators in general, it brings a joy that is undeniable. And it's really like once your garden's in and you learn how to grow from seed and propagate, it's not that expensive. And it's right outside your back door. You don't have to get in the car and drive anywhere. You don't have to go to a store. You walk out your back door. If you have a fantastic garden in your backyard and you're ever feeling kind of ho-hum glum, get up and go outside and explore. It, it will like change your attitude night and day. Okay, let's go get some cuttings. The, the gardening therapy session is now over. <laughs> when you look at the little branch you're trimming on the tree, it looks smaller than in reality it is. Look how big this is. It's gonna go up to the ceiling. I'll have to trim a little off the top. It makes me think of the people that go out and like, uh, get their Christmas trees where you chop your own, which of course we don't have much like that here. There are some Florida like native trees people use for Christmas trees, but growing up up north, I, I need I need the regular kind of Christmas trees. So, but you know, you've seen people where they go chop it down, then they bring it back, and it doesn't fit in their house. That that's what this made me think of. All right, one, two, three, four, ready to go. Let me grab my babies from 
in the lepidarium. Oh my gosh, putting four in is really going to fill up this lepidarium. It's going to make me feel like I have more. <laughs> That's always a good thing because it's been feeling kind of empty in here, I got to admit. All right, I just pulled out one stem and it has two babies on it. So they'll go in one, kind of divvy them up. Put you guys in here. And then they'll be able to just climb on to all that new greenery Whenever they're ready. Okay, so this cutting has just one tiny baby on it. It's significantly smaller than the other one, so I'm going to give him his own place so, you know, he doesn't feel, um, I was going to say bullied. <laughs> Because he's the little guy. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> anyway, he's getting his own plant. All right, there he is. Oh my gosh, so adorable. That is group two. This cutting only has this one little guy on it. Um, and then the other cutting has three. Oh, did you see that? He just pooped. Mm -hmm. Frass. Caterpillar poop is called frass. Yeah. So what I'll do on the other cutting. Look at how cute this little guy is. Um, it has a taller branch coming up and there's another one up here. So I'll just trim that off and we'll put that one in with the other guy. Look at him trying to thwart my plan by climbing up. Let me go hurry up and go get that cutting. <laughs> now, can I pick these guys up and move them? Yes, I could, but I prefer to let them think it's their idea. So it's as much like nature as possible. Oh my gosh, they're adorable. How many times have I said that? Somebody count and tell me in the comments. How many times have I said they're adorable? Just wait till the polydomas are here. Oh my. You know, I started thinking I only put the one on the one plant. And so I thought I had eight caterpillars, but that would make seven. And then here, as I'm putting in this final um, cutting right there on the other side. And I don't know when I edit all No, look, there's a baby. So I'm just leaving them all here together. So there'll be three on this one and I have eight. That's close to three, four or five. That's close enough. So what is it about these guys that make them my favorite? Um, giant swallowtails are beautiful butterflies. But um, in this case, when I talk about my favorite, I mean my favorite to raise as caterpillars. They're not necessarily my favorite butterflies, although giant swallowtails are gorgeous. Um, but there's something about these caterpillars that just get me a little bit more than all the other ones I have raised. Both of them are kind of laid back and chill. I mean, a lot of times you'll just look at the polydomus caterpillar or the giant swallowtail caterpillar and they're just sitting there hanging out, you know. They got all the time in the world, no rush to eat. Whereas when you look at the monarchs, they're constantly eating, like constantly. It's like almost an obsession. 
and I, I kind of like the laid back, relaxed, chill caterpillars. And the only reason why the polydomus rank number one above the giant swallowtails is I just think it's caterpillars. They just have that cuteness factor. They are, to me, as my personal opinion, absolutely adorable. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm just going to go explore and see if that polydomus swallowtail left any eggs on any of my other pipe vines. You know, that's so interesting because I saw her go to all the different locations in my garden where I have Woolly Dutchman's pipe vine. So you would think I would find more eggs, but I didn't. Because they lay them like all at once, where you know monarch uh, flies, lays an egg, and then goes somewhere else and lays an egg, where the polydomus lays a cluster of them, I wonder like if it kind of is exhausting, I could imagine. And uh, I wonder if she like has to rest up before she can lay another cluster of eggs, but she's just checking out the territory so she knows where she wants to go. I don't know, it's, it's just an idea, it's a thought I had. Okay, y'all, I'm gonna go edit this video and get it up for you tonight. And you're gonna tap the like button and I'm still at 38, 3,138. I have been at that number for so long, which is fine. Maybe I'm supposed to go buy a lotto ticket with the number 38 on it. Maybe so. I don't buy lotto tickets, but I don't know. Maybe that's my sign. And um, join the Milkweed crew. They got their new video yesterday. I've been posting regularly and I'm having so much fun answering their questions via video. So if you find you want to learn more about butterfly gardening and you want to be able to ask me specific questions where I actually talk to you and answer them, Join the Milkweed Crew, $4.99 a month. I'll put the link in the comment, the pinned comment, which should show up right below this video. It'll make it easier for you to find. Otherwise, it's always in the description. I hope you all are having a fabulous day, and I will see you in my next video.